you can't actually see some of the most damaging pollution. It's called PM 2.5 and involves particles that are microscopically small. So let's use virtual reality to visualize them. They're less than 2.5 microns across, which means you could fit 400 in a single millimeter. By comparison, a grain of sand is 20 times larger. Now, this matters because the particles are small enough not just to get into the lungs, but also into the bloodstream. Now, this kind of pollution is measured by the cubic meter of air. So let's visualize that right here. The World Health Organization sets a maximum limit of 25 of these particles in this space. It says we shouldn't breathe more of them over a 24-hour period. But a level of 200 is routinely reached in many Chinese cities. And it once peaked at 800, a seriously hazardous level. This is where the authorities keep track of air quality across the city. It operates 24 hours a day. Now, they've got 35 monitoring stations represented by these dots. Yellow is pretty good air. Orange in the middle of Beijing, getting worse. But the most severe is down towards the south. Now, Beijing's problem is that it's ringed by mountains to the west and to the north. So any pollution generated within the city, all stuff that's blown up from the south, can get trapped here and hang around for days. Now, what about that pollution type PM 2.5? Well, this graph shows the data from a dozen monitoring sites. Interestingly, you see how the PM 2.5 can be pretty high at night. This is from a Sunday, dips during the course of the day, and then rises again at night. Now, bear in mind the World Health Organization recommended maximum limit is 25 of these PM 2.5 particles. That line would run along here. So the fact that these lines are so much above that recommended limit shows you the scale of the problem. Now, this is a kind of airlock giving you access to this vast inflatable dome that covers part of the playground here at the International School in Beijing. The school was so concerned about air pollution, it invested in this facility to give the kids a chance to play without breathing in polluted air. This place, and in fact the whole school, operates what's called positive pressure. So the air flows out of the building to prevent the pollution coming in. It's just one example of the kind of measures people are taking to tackle the scourge of air pollution.